In this video, I want to describe the difference between pounds force, and I, I denote that by pounds force, versus pounds mass. And I'll also talk about a thing called a, a slug, which is, which is kind of mysterious. Um, but I wanted to kind of denote the difference between these two. Um, so in my class, I'm always, I'm always going to assume that when I give pounds, if, you, if you're looking at any of my videos or anything from my class, that it's a force, that my pounds are a force. And so what does that mean? So if I, if I tell you that my weight is 150 pounds, and here I'll write pounds force just to be extra clear. Um, you, you could convert that to the metric system. A lot of students are, are more comfortable with the metric system. So you could look up the conversion that there are 4.448 newtons uh, in one pound force. And so, so that, that, that my weight in the metric system is 667 newtons. And so that's, that's how we can get to my, my weight from pounds force to newtons. And so then if we wanted to figure out my mass in the metric system, well, we know that force, which is in newtons, and these are SI base units, is equal to mass, which is in kilograms, times the acceleration, which in this case would be the acceleration due to gravity, which is in meters per second squared. So these are, are the SI base units for force, mass, and acceleration. And so if I wanted to get my mass, I could take 667 newtons and divide it by the acceleration due to gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. And I'm left with my, my mass in kilograms, which would be 68 kilograms. And so... If I, if I go over to Google, which happens to be one of my favorite unit converters, I could type in 150 pounds, and I, I didn't denote the difference here between pounds force and pounds mass, and I can say two kilograms to convert it to kilograms and click the search button, and I could see um, that I get this answer here that matches, 68 kilograms. So 150 pounds is 68 kilograms. But we can see that Google here is assuming that my pounds are mass. And so I could I can look at my, my units here and none of them are forces. They're all gonna be masses. And it says here that this is a, a mass, not a force. And so um, I need to think about this because this is where students get really confused. And so what I, what I can infer uh, is that it doesn't really matter that if I type in 150 pounds, um, I could get my mass in kilograms. I could also, uh, change this to be pounds force, and I could convert that to newtons, and I'd see that that's this, uh, the same answer, 667 newtons. Um, and so we need to explore what's going on here. So what is going on here? Well, just like we have the, the metric force equals ma, we have the base units, newtons, kilograms, and meters per second squared. We could also do this in the US customary system of units. So we could look at the imperial system of units. We have force, and here the standard unit for force in US system of units is the pound force is equal to mass, and the the standard the the standard unit for mass in the imperial system of units is actually this thing here called the slug, uh, S-L-U-G, uh, not like the one in your garden, but um, similar. So uh, mass times, it, which is the slug, times acceleration, which is in feet per second squared. So just like we had one kilogram times one meters per second squared equals one newton, if I and if I was given, you know, milligrams or centimeters per second squared, I have to convert them to the base units in order to get newtons, or my, my units would be wrong. Here, um, if I, I have one slug times one foot per second squared equals one pound of force. And so if I'm given anything that's in some different units, maybe pounds mass, I need to convert it to pound to slugs before I can calculate my pounds force. So we need the conversion factor, which is 32.2 pounds mass 
is equal to one slug. So 32.2 pounds mass is equal to one slug. And so if I have my pounds in mass and I want to get the, the force, I can do my, my mass. So say it's 150 pounds mass um, divided by 32.2 pounds mass for one slug. So now my units are in slugs. Then I can multiply by the acceleration due to gravity, which is 32.2 feet per second squared. So we can see on Earth, these cancel out. We, we have our 32.2s cancel out. And we're left with um, one pound force. 150 pounds force is equal to 150 pound mass. Um, and so this... This is great on Earth, but we need to realize that if we go to the moon, our mass stays the same, or if we go to any other planet, the mass stays the same, but our our force might change. And so uh, if we go to some other planet, our mass is going to stay 68 kilograms. Um, it's going to stay 150 um, pounds mass, or we could convert that to slugs, and that would stay the same as well. Um, but the force that we, we exert on the moon is going to change. And so we, the only thing that really changes here is our acceleration. And so on the moon, the acceleration due to gravity is 1.622 meters per second squared, or 5.32 feet per second squared. And so we could calculate what our force is. And here, one pound mass is not going to be one pound force. And so we could look at it either way. We could plug this into the metric system. We have, um, again, my mass didn't change. So 150 pound mass times one slug divided by 32.2 pounds mass. And then we multiply that acceleration due to gravity times 5.32 feet per second squared. And that's equal to our new weight on the moon, which would be 24.8 pounds force. Um, or to think about it back in the metric example, uh, our mass stayed the same, 68 kilograms, um, times the acceleration due to gravity, 1.622 meters per second squared. Here we didn't have to do any unit conversions because we're already in the SI base unit. But here we had to convert our pounds mass to the base unit of slugs. Um, and so that gives us our new uh, weight on the moon in newtons, 110 newtons. And so um, we can see now that, okay, on the moon, one pound mass is not equal to one pound force. And so to avoid any confusion in any of my classes, what I'm going to do is anytime I give you pounds, I'm talking about pounds as a force. And anytime I give you a mass in the imperial system of units, I'm going to use slugs as a mass. I will never use pounds mass to avoid any confusion with pounds force. And in statics, we're, we're always interested in, in forces more than masses. Um, and so in the, in the SI system, it's more clear. Uh, force is a newton and a mass is a kilogram. In the imperial system, it's a little less clear because your force uh, is going to be pounds force, but your mass could be pounds mass or slugs. Um, but I will always use the base unit, which is slugs. Thanks for watching.